Thank you. I'd like now to recognize Ms. Ms. Manning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ranking Member Scott. I'm glad we're having this hearing. Frankly, it's about time. We've seen anti-Semitism on the rise across the United States and around the world, including a 40% increase in anti-Semitic incidents at colleges and universities, and that was before the October 7th Hamas attack. Sadly, since October 7th, the ADL has found an almost 400% increase of anti-Semitic incidents on college campuses, including so many of the incidents we've heard about today. As the co-chair of the House Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism, I strongly condemn all of this anti-Semitic activity. And sadly and inexplicably, far too many college and university leaders have totally failed to fulfill their moral responsibility to clearly reject hatred, violence, and anti-Semitism. There is much more we can do to counter anti-Semitism and protect Jewish students. And I'm very eager to work with any of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to work on this issue. In fact, in August, I helped lead 87 members of Congress on a bipartisan and bicameral letter to, Senator, to Secretary Cardona, urging the department to take concrete steps to clear the backlog of pending complaints, to prioritize the pending proposed regulations, and to implement key commitments in the U.S. national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to request unanimous consent to enter this letter into the record. No objection. Thank you. Mr. Marcus, I am so grateful to you and your colleagues at Brandeis for your work. In April, the Biden administration reached a milestone settlement with the University of Vermont on anti-Semitism. And would you view that as a success? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. Yes, the Louis D. Brandeis Center uh, filed that complaint jointly with uh, Jewish on campus, and uh, we view it as a success, and it is our understanding that there has been a dramatic difference on that campus since the resolution. And would funding the OCR fully pushing forward on issuing regulations and implementing the U.S. national strategy to counter anti-Semitism, would all of those things help lead to a greater number of similar successful resolutions to instances of campus anti-Semitism? Respectfully, I don't think I can say um, I'm convinced of that. Um, you know, I uh, headed OCR during two administrations. There have been arguments for and against uh, increases or decreases, often on party lines. My sense has been that if, think about anti-Semitism as an issue that seldom occupies even one-tenth of one percent of intake, um, maybe it will be. So uh, to me, um, fluctuations in the budget of OCR are not what impacts the ability of OCR to address anti-Semitism. So, so let me ask you this question, because we know that there are a record number of 19,000 complaints that OCR received last year, and yet a tiny number of those, I think only five, are related to anti-Semitism. And uh, I think in the last, since October 7th, only eight or nine complaints have been about anti-Semitism. This is shocking in light of what we hear from students when we talk with them on campuses, what we hear in the press. So why is it that we've seen such a significant increase in anti-Semitic incidents as reported by students, by others on college campuses, and yet what we're seeing filed at OCR is only a tiny percentage of those claims. What's getting in the way of, of students uh, filing complaints? Students are often reluctant to file complaints against their university for reasons that vary from um, loyalty to their institution, to ignorance of the availability of the process, to fear that it's not going to be successful. We're now seeing more complaints coming in, and the Brandeis Center will have more to come, but I really think that it is incumbent on OCR uh, to proactively investigate cases and not just wait for complaints to come in for exactly the sorts of reasons that you've just mentioned. So college is a time when young people find themselves and decide what they want to be. And I am deeply concerned that what young Jews are facing today on college campuses, the shocking anti-Semitism, is going to force them to decide that they are simply safer if they hide what's Jewish about them, if they do not take part in Jewish life, 
if they abandon that part of their identity. So I just want to urge my colleagues, we need to do more to address this issue. My time is expiring, and I thank all the witnesses today.